back. Now, if you were wandering home from the pub this week and happened to spot the Northern Lights up in the Irish sky, we promise it wasn't the case of I shouldn't have had that last drink. Uh-huh. No, that, we weren't saying that. You weren't hallucinating. <laughs> no. Joining us now to explain how the Northern Lights made it all the way down to Ireland is Astronomy Ireland's David Moore. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Now, I, I was just saying to you earlier, like my sister saw the Northern Lights in Finland. People travel Finland, Norway, Iceland, but to have it in Ireland and to see it in Ireland, it's blown people's minds. It's such a treat. So could you explain what this phenomenon is for people that don't know? Well, some people say a total eclipse of the sun is the most spectacular sight in nature. And I've been lucky to see a couple of those. And I'll tell you, when the aurora is angry in the polar regions, it, it dwarfs a total eclipse. And I've been lucky to go to the Arctic Circle four times leading tourists to, to watch them. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. But we only we, we get that in polar regions. But every night in Ireland, though, we probably only get it 1% of the time. So they're quite rare. So you do really need to travel or uh, watch Astronomy Island's predictions. We'll tell you when the next one's happening. What are we looking at here? These are pictures I took myself uh, wow. with uh, actually the camera. It's exactly the camera system behind me here. And you can see. The green band, which is the first thing you always see, it doesn't look that green to the naked eye. It looks, tends to look greyish, but the cameras bring out the colours. And you can see it's beginning to get active. Some of the rays mm -hmm. are, are coming up out of it. And this is sheets of radiation coming in from the sun, being directed by the Earth's magnetic field. So they always end up out near the North Pole. And then if they get really angry, if it pumps billions of tonnes of radiation in, which is what happened last weekend, then that... Uh, aurora spreads out from the polar regions, comes as far south as Ireland. This probably would have been a thousand miles away, at least wow. the green band. And then the red bands above it, you can see how angry it's getting now as yeah. time goes on. Uh, th these are uh, particles hitting the atmosphere even higher up wow. and causing those lovely red colours. You can get blues as well if you're really lucky. You said that's a thousand miles away. So mm -hmm. how, how long does it take to get to to get to us, to get to Ireland, yeah. to get to Earth. Yeah. yeah, well, we can predict them. So we can see explosions on the sun. It's 93 million, 150 million miles, 150 million kilometers away. Okay. Yeah. And it takes the light eight minutes to get here. So we see the flash. And then the debris, the radiation takes two days. And we now have spacecraft watching for this debris coming. And they can tell us when it's about to arrive. So we knew on Friday, the Friday and Saturday, there was a big explosion on the sun aimed at the Earth. And on Sunday afternoon on our social media, we were able to predict there's going to be an aurora tonight. Oh, and a lot of people went out and saw it. A lot of people just saw it anyway. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah. that obvious. Uh, so uh, um, the, the distance to the actual aurora is, is not important compared to the distance to the sun. Yeah. And things are moving at s silly figures in astronomy. <laughs> Two million miles an hour wow. is how fast that radiation moves. It, it's mad. So hotel prices are not putting the aurora off from coming to us. <laughs> it's, it... No, it'll come anyway, regardless. <laughs> and we could have another display uh, next week. It could be next year, though, So from it usually Ireland. stays for a period of, of time. Yeah, you usually get it for several hours. Several and in hours. fact, we were very lucky. There was a sort of double explosion on the sun this time. And the on Sunday night, there was a great display on a Monday night mm -hmm. there was another display now Sunday was great because a lot of the country was clear yeah but on Monday only the West was clear right. and we got dozens of fantastic pictures in hundreds of all kinds of pictures uh, that'll be going into a special yeah. issue of our magazine yeah but then that wasn't the only cosmic surprise because we could mm. see Venus from Cork is that right yeah I mean we were predicting well in advance months in advance that the planet Venus and Jupiter would pass close to one another really close to one another because yeah. my wife said to me the other evening we're sitting down having and then she said, they've got to be planets in the skies. Mm. And we're looking at Venus now. That's Venus up close with a spacecraft. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is when they strip away all the clouds. You can see it's a very volcanic world, yeah. we think, and a horrible place to go. It looks lovely and serene in the sky, named after the goddess of beauty. In fact, it's nearly 500 Celsius on the surface. Wow. It rains <laughs> battery acid out of the sky, and it's 95% yeah, yeah. carbon dioxide, that choking greenhouse gas. So a hell off Earth. <laughs> Nothing like the beauty it looks like well, in well, the sky. Well, yeah, I think we're going to get a shot of Jupiter now. And oh, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. another spacecraft picture of Jupiter. You'll see it in a telescope like mm. the one we've got here, like that almost. Maybe not all the fine detail, but I've seen the great red spot you can see there, yeah. a huge swirling hurricane. And Jupiter is 12 times wider than Venus. It looks dimmer in the sky because it's much further, further away, away, four times yeah. further okay. away. And although they were close as last Wednesday and Thursday, they're only slowly pulling apart. So tonight, the next few nights, you'll still see still them quite the spectacular. I, I mean, that, that, yeah, there's a picture I, I took myself. So from the yeah. naked eye, it almost looks like really, really bright stars. Yeah. yeah, the word planet is from Greek meaning wandering star. And the ancient Greeks 
notice all the star patterns stay the same, but these bright ones move around yeah, from yeah. week to week. Yeah. And that's a, a proof of the pudding that they can pass each other. Yeah. Very rare event. We we'll probably only have it every decade or so in evening skies. Yeah. And like for, for kids that might want to stay up, like when's the best time to look out of the window and try to spot these? The, there's usually balance. something visible all the time. So yeah. the moon is, is full on Tuesday. It's actually called the warm moon. So you have a lovely bright full moon, great in telescopes and binoculars to have a look at that. Okay. Uh, so as soon as it gets dark, you'll see those two planets if it's clear. It's and then the moon will be a, a fantastic sight for the next week. And there's always something happen. The moon is going to pass in front of Venus and Mars mm -hmm. later this year. There's going to be an eclipse of the moon in October. Oh. Uh, so there's always great things to see just with the naked eye. You don't even need yeah. a pair of binoculars. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, you can also look at skywards. You'll see constellations. You'll see meteor showers. Yeah. Like you said, there's and you lots of things going on. And you can almost Google Google the patterns to get familiar with them. Is that right? Just for yeah. someone that wouldn't know. These days are apps on your phone that you can hold them up and they'll actually put the words beside them. It wasn't like that in my day. I <laughs> so they can I tell a bit harder, Dave. <laughs> I, glued, I glued a star map to huge lumps of cardboard, hung them on the clothesline <laughs> and with a torch learned the stars the hard way. Wow. Now it's much easier. An awful lot easier. Anyway, for those who want to you know, take on astronomy as a hobby, what equipment do they need? How do they begin? Where should they begin? Well, they always say, and I uh, have to uh, confess, join your uh, National Astronomy Society. We've yeah. got a great magazine, Astronomy on Magazine. Yeah. And if, there's lots to see with the naked eye, if you just said. But if you want to have a closer look, for about 20 quid these days, you'll get a pair of binoculars like these, 10 by 50s. Mm. 10x means they magnify 10 times. 50 is how wide the lenses are at the front. Mm. The wider they are, the brighter the image. They make these in large numbers for horse racing, sailing, yeah. and everything else, yeah. so the astronomers piggyback on that and get them really inexpensively. Okay. And they're really two telescopes side by side. One of the pictures we were looking at, taken by, with that camera. Yeah, this is a fancy camera. You don't need this camera, to be honest. Uh, for, the roar of pictures we got uh, sent into us, well, some of them were taken with camera phones mm -hmm. these days, mm -hmm. especially ones that have night mode, where you can get an app that lets, lets them take long exposures. This is a fancy camera. You can change the lens. It's the one I photographed. The we're running with. out of time, so just quickly onto the telescope. And if you do want to get a telescope, you go by that diameter, not the magnification. This one's 70 millimeters across. Now it's on a tripod, so you can magnify a bit more and see detail on the planets. Okay. And you don't need to go to the monster behind us here. <laughs> that just Let's of talk about this big boy. <laughs> but we do bring it out for events to let people look through it. So it's coming out on March 24th for Irish Astronomy Week. It's coming up then, and there's a huge event in September up in the Wicklow Mountains people can come to. Okay, it's brilliant. Exciting. Good to see you again, David. You great too, Mark. Uh, remember, great you can learn more about the wonderful world of astronomy from David Moore and his fellow experts on their website, astronomy.ie. Up next, best selling author Kira Geraghty is breaking the taboo on menopause. She joins us right after this break.